Hello everyone, this is Duvi Kothari here and today we are going to talk about a few important points on contraception for the Plan 1 exam. In order to remember all the available contraceptive methods, it is important for us to classify them into two divisions which are the temporary methods and the permanent methods. The permanent methods of contraceptives are prescribed to those females who have already completed their families or who do not wish to get pregnant again. The temporary methods are prescribed to those females who want to space their pregnancies or who wish to get pregnant in the future. The temporary methods are further divided into four categories which are the barrier methods, the natural methods, the intrauterine contraceptive devices and the steroidal contraception. The barrier methods are further divided into two classes which are the physical methods and the chemical methods. The physical methods include the male condom, the female condom, the female diaphragm, the cervical cap. The chemical barrier methods include foams, jellies, which are usually spermicidal agents like minoxenol 9. Coming to the natural methods of contraceptives, examples are the calendar method, which, uh, which avoids uh, intercourse during the fertile period of the menstrual cycle, that is around the time of ovulation. The next example is coitus interruptus, which is the withdrawal of penis before ejaculation. The next method is the intrauterine contraceptive device, which includes the insertion of a copper device into the uterus. This acts as a mechanical barrier and also releases a small amount of copper every day, which acts as a spermicidal agent. This helps in preventing the pregnancy. The next method is the steroidal contraception, which includes the hormones, that is the estrogen and the progesterone. The first type is the oral method, which include the combined oral contraceptive pills and the progesterone only pills. The next is the parenteral method, which include the implants and the injectables. The next one is the intrauterine system, which is Mirena. Uh, this includes levonorgestrel, which is released uh, every day. The last one are the transdermal patches. Permanent methods of contraceptives include vas uh, vasectomy for males and tubectomy for females. Now, let's discuss a few important contraceptive methods for the PLAV1 exam. The first one being the con oral contraceptive pills. It is important for us to remember a few contraindications for the combined oral contraceptive pills to enlist a few smoking, hypertension, migraine, obesity that is BMI more than 30 kg per meter square. This is because the combined pills themselves cause a small amount of weight gain. History of thromboembolism because the combined pills create a state of hypercoagulability which could increase the risk of thromboembolism. Females with learning difficulties should not be prescribed oral contraceptive pills because they might forget to take the pills regularly which could lead to contraceptive failure. Postpartum females should not be prescribed the combined pills. If she is breastfeeding, it should not be prescribed for 6 months because the estrogen component of the pills interferes with the breast milk production. If she is not breastfeeding, they shouldn't be prescribed for 6 weeks. Important point to remember is that no contraceptive is required for 21 days postpartum and progesterone only pills are safe to be prescribed in a female who is breastfeeding. When it comes to prescribing contraceptives in females who are less than 20 years old, we shouldn't prescribe Mirena to them or Depo-Provera because Mirena is an intrauterine system and most of these females are nulliparous. Depo-Provera, which is an intramuscular injection of medroxyprogesterone acetate, it increases the risk of osteoporosis if given at such a young age. Depo-Provera is the contraceptive of choice in females suffering from menorrhagia and also the first line contraceptive to be prescribed in those females who are suffering from sickle cell because it is known to decrease the frequency of the sickle crisis. When it comes to the females who are less than 20 years old, the contraceptives of choice could be the Nexplanon, which is the etonogestural implant or the combined oral contraceptive pill or the progesterone only pill.
Many females who are prescribed Epoprovera or Mirena experience a breakthrough bleeding, which is spotting between the cycles. They get really worried and report back to you. So how do you counsel them? So you tell them that this bleeding is harmless and uh, you reassure them. You tell them to wait for a few cycles, like three to six cycles to give the body a chance to adjust. But you tell them to report back if there's a lot of bleeding, if it's creating a problem, if it's uncontrolled bleeding. So when the bleeding becomes problematic, we prescribe combined oral contraceptive pills along with the Myrena and the Depo-Provera. For three months, this will help the cycles become regular or we can prescribe mephenemic acid or tranexamic acid for five days. There are a few important terms which are frequently used in gynecology that we should be aware of. These include menorrhagia, which is heavy menstruation or excessive bleeding, dysmenorrhea, which is painful bleeding, and metorrhagia, which is irregular menstruation. So when a young female who is not sexually active, that means that she won't require contraceptive, presents to you with only menorrhagia, we prescribe tranexamic acid to her. When she presents with dysmenorrhea, we prescribe mephenemic acid to her. When she presents with metorrhagia, with or without dysmenorrhea or menorrhagia, we prescribe combined oral contraceptive pills. On the other hand, if a young sexually active female, that is she will require a contraceptive method, presents to you with menorrhagia or dysmenorrhea, or fibroids which are not interfering with the uterine cavity, we prescribe Mirena which is an intrauterine system. But if the Mirena is contraindicated, that is in case of a female who is less than 20 years or if no long term contraceptive is required, like if she plans to get pregnant in the near future, we prescribe combined oral contraceptive pills. Of course, if there is no contraindication for it, or we can prescribe progesterone only pills. If the fibroids are distorting the uterine cavity, we prescribe implants, which are Nexplanol, for example, which is the etanogestrol implant, which is replaced every three years. When it comes to emergency contraception, that is, if the female presents to us within three days, that is 72 hours of unprotected intercourse, we can give her levonol pill, which is levonogestrol pill. If she presents to us within 120 hours, that is five days of unprotected intercourse, we have two options. We can give her L11 pill, which is the ulipristil, or we can give her intrauterine copper device. We have covered most of the important points, so now let's solve a few questions. Let's look at the first question. A 45-year-old female presents to the contraceptive clinic who has two young children and does not wish to have any more children. An incidental finding of multiple small submucosal fibroids was seen on the ultrasound scan. However, she is asymptomatic and without any underlying medical conditions. So, what would be the contraceptive of choice for this female? The options are etonogestrol implant, combined oral contraceptive pills, progesterone only pills or intrauterine system. Let's give you all some time to think about the answer. There are a few key points in the question that give away the answer. I hope you all are ready with your answers. So, let's discuss it. The first key point is that she does not want to have children anymore. That means that she is looking for a long-term contraceptive device. This rules out the combined oral contraceptive pills and the progesterone only pills option. We are left with only etonogestrol and intrauterine system. The next key point is the incidental finding of fibroids but she's asymptomatic, so the fibroids are not interfering with the uterine cavity. This means that we can put in an intrauterine system. When we compare etonogestrol implant to the intrauterine system, that is Mirena, the duration varies. The implant is for up to three years, whereas Mirena can be kept in for up to five to six years. So 
the contraceptor of choice for this female would be intrauterine system. Let's look at the second question. A 16-year-old girl who is not sexually active presents to the general physician complaining of painful menstrual cycles. She is otherwise fit and has a 28-day regular cycle. What is the most appropriate management in this case? The options are tranexamic acid, endometrial ablation, combined oral contraceptive pills, mephilimic acid, and intrauterine system. Let's wait for you all to think of the answer. So, let's pick the key points in this question for our answer. The first one is 16 years old female, not sexually active. This means that she is not looking for a contraceptive device. The next key point is she is complaining of painful menses. This means that she is suffering from dysmenorrhea. However, her cycles are 28 day regular cycles. This rules out the metoragia component. I think the answer is pretty clear here. 16 year old female not sexually active with just dysmenorrhea. The treatment of choice would be mephenemic acid. That's correct. Let's look at the next question. A 17 years old high school female presents to your clinic with irregular menstrual cycles and complaining of menorrhagia, that is excessive bleeding during her menstruation. She is not sexually active. What would be the appropriate management in this case? The options are methanemic acid, combined oral contraceptive pills, progesterone-only pills, intrauterine copper device, and intrauterine system. Let's wait for you all to think. I'm sure you all answered this really quick. So let's discuss a 17-year-old female, not sexually active. That means not looking for a contraception. She is complaining of irregular cycles, that is metorrhagia along with menorrhagia. So not sexually active plus metorrhagia plus menorrhagia, the treatment of choices. Yes, correct. Combined oral contraceptive pill. This will help make the cycles regular and will also take care of the excessive bleeding component. Let's take a look at the next question. A 22-year-old female has been prescribed rifampicin for prophylaxis as her roommate has been diagnosed with meningococcal meningitis. She is sexually active and has been taking combined oral contraceptive pills for a year now. What is the most appropriate advice that you would give this female? The options are use alternative methods of contraception, for example, barrier methods, uh, continue using the oral contraceptive pills as usual, present to the emergency department if the face starts swelling up. The next option is avoid exercise for three days. And the last option is stop the combined oral contraceptive pills for a week. Let's think of the answer. So this is something that we haven't covered till now, but is an interesting question. So rifampicin is a drug which induces an enzyme system called the CYP450. This enzyme is responsible for the metabolism of the oral contraceptive pills. So when rifampicin induces this enzyme, this leads to increased metabolism of the oral contraceptive pills. So this increased metabolism will lead to decreased concentration of these uh, drugs in the serum. So this could lead to contraceptive failure, which we would not like to see in this female. So we would advise that she uses an alternative form of contraceptive along with the oral contraceptive pills, which could be a barrier method till she is taking rifampicin. So, the answer is A. The next question is, a 25-year-old female who is 22 days postpartum wishes for a contraceptive device which does not include needles. However, she wishes to get pregnant after the next 6 months. What is the contraceptive of choice that you would advise for this female? The options are intrauterine system, progesterone-only pills, implants and 
oral contraceptive pills. So, let's think of the answer. The key points here are that she is 22 days postpartum. That means that she might be breastfeeding. So, the oral contraceptive pills option is ruled out because it is not safe for a breastfeeding female. The next key point is that she does not want any contraception that involves needles. So, it rules out the implants option. And the last key point is that she wishes to get pregnant again after 6 months. So, she does not want a long-term contraceptive device. So, the intrauterine system is out of question. So, we are left with progesterone only pills, which is the safest one to prescribe to a breastfeeding female. So, the answer is option B, progesterone only pills. So, the last question of the day. An 18-year-old female who has learning difficulties is currently using condoms and wishes for an alternate option of contraception. What would be the most appropriate method that you would suggest her? The options are intrauterine system, combined oral contraceptive pills, Depo-Provera and the last one is Nexplano. So, let's think about it. So, let's break down the question. She is an 18-year-old female. So, she is less than 20 years old. This rules out the option of intrauterine system and Depo-Provera because Depo-Provera increases the risk of osteoporosis at such a young age and she might be nulliparous. So, we avoid intrauterine system. Now, she, is, she has learning difficulties. So, we would not prescribe her any pills since she might forget to take it regularly. So, we're left with next plan on. And the answer is last option, next plan on. So, this brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you all enjoyed and the video was helpful to you all. Thank you for joining.